Good morning, my name is Keith Thompson and I'm part of the product team here at Axminster. And today's little video is all about this new industrial series bandsaw. It's a brand new design and it follows the theme that the bandsaw ranges are starting to, to uh, lead with in America, where you have a very deep cut of machine and a, a relatively narrow width of cut. It's always been more or less the other way around in the past. And the reason for that is to give a very stiff chassis so that you can cut deep veneers uh, with a good blade tension without any problem at all. And we can take a closer look at how the chassis works in the next clip. Okay, with all the doors open, you can now see into the chassis. It's made of three mil welded steel and it's gusseted everywhere. There are a full structure inside here to carry the top wheel and when you look down below here, you'll find that there's another set of structures that carry the bottom wheel and there is a shelf being put in here to strengthen the chassis and also gives room for a very useful storage cabinet down below here. So it's not wasted space. So all in all, it's given you a tremendous strength to be able to cut deep sections that you're able to do with this machine. Okay, looking at other features in this area, we have the blade guide system. This has twin roller bearings to give full support to even a wide blade or right down to the quarter inch or smaller blades. And there is a uh, thrust bearing just behind here, easily adjustable, just a simple uh, Allen hexagon bolt to undo. And they, these are on eccentric cams, so you can get them exactly set exactly as you want to. You'll notice the depth of cut that's a full 360 millimeters, or just over 14 inches. And the rise and fall mechanism is very, very easy to operate. Um, you can see the top part of it actually protrudes through the top of the chassis, so that, that works really, really well. And you've got a scale here to give an indication of your depth of cut. Okay, moving on to the table, I'll just run through the two fences. This fence is actually a version of our UJK compact mitre fence. Um, it's exactly the same except in silver instead of orange. You have some s holes on either side of the 90 degree or zero degree um, segment here and you have a little indexing pin. So to change the angle you just undo the central handle and then you can set at 22 and a half, 30, 45 and so on. So it's a really nice mitre fence, much, much more elaborate than the usual fare you get with machinery. And you can also, by adjusting some screws here, um, you can actually make it fit really, really tightly in the mitre fence slot itself. So that's a really great feature. Plus you have a flip stop, so if you're doing repeated cuts of short lengths, you can use this fence with the flip stop to keep that accurately uh, done. The other fence is familiar to those customers or people who know our trade and smaller industrial series machines. It has this tall fence rail. It um, is fitted onto the uh, front rail with a cam lock and you have a magnifying scale here as well. Uh, but you can also fit the fence into a lower position simply by sliding it off the, the, uh, the holder rotating it 90 degrees and then you can lock it into place. So if you're doing small work, you haven't got that fence being cumbersome in the way, you can actually use the fence like so. Okay, you'll notice the table is full sized very, very rigid cast iron. It's got a massive amount of ribbing underneath to keep it absolutely perfectly flat. You also have a, a, a lever here which you can take off that allows you to change the blade through this slot, but it also keeps this part of the table perfectly flat. Tilting the table, this is a massively heavy table, but that is an actually a very easy task. You just undo one Bristol lock lever at the back here, and then you have a rack and pinion mechanism controlled by a lever, so it moves absolutely perfectly smoothly. And there is also a stop just here that you can adjust to make sure the table is exactly at 90 degrees with the blade when it's down. But if you need to do some work where you need the bevel the other way, this table will go back five, minus five degrees, simply like so. So it's a very simple and easy system to use, no hard work in that at all. Flip the stop back up, put the table on the stop and then clamp up behind here, just one-handed, so simple. Okay, as I said earlier about the underside of the table, it's worth taking a look at this. The table itself is massively ribbed to give it all the strength, 
but also there's no point in having all that strength on the table if you can move it around all over the place, which you can't on this machine. The bottom quadrant is really strong. It's a cast iron section machined out. You can also see you have double guides here for the blades, as I said earlier, and the thrust bearing is easily adjustable with a hand knob at the back here. And this is the rack and pinion system that actually makes the table tilt so easily. So all in all, this is a thoroughly well-engineered system under here. It's worth explaining about the motor and the switch gear. The motor itself has a mechanical brake, a bit like the disc brake on the car. It needs power to actually release it. Now this is very important for educational establishments. Now you have a switch system here with, with three positions where the brake is on in that position. But if you want to change the blade, you can simply select brake off. Then you can move the blade by hand quite easily without any risk. You can press the green button and nothing happens. You have a power indicator light here anyway to tell you that it's all live. And then you move the switch to position two, which is the run, and now the machine will start. And you'll hear the brake cut in so it, it stops the machine really, really quickly within two or three seconds. But it's also fitted with an emergency stop switch, uh, which basically when you press that in, it locks in and you need a key to release it. So you can, if you're in a school or other type of establishment like that, keep the key safe in a drawer. And if someone activates that, you need the key to come and release it again to allow the machine to run. So you can find out what the problem is. Okay, we haven't mentioned the motor yet. This is a two horsepower or 1.5 kilowatt motor. Um, it's of a high torque design, but it actually has quite a low start current. So it's quite happily running on a 13 amp plug, which is really good. And it's very cool running with an alloy body and the brake mechanism lives underneath that cover. And just here are the two controls you use to adjust the uh, belt tension inside the lower cabinet. Okay, to sum this machine up, you can see it's not a big machine physically, so it's not going to take up a lot of space in your workshop, no matter how small it really is. But with a near four, over 14 inch depth of cut and a full 308 or just over 12 inch width of cut, that's got a pretty impressive capability. It's really taking advantage of modern blade technology with Grand Tooth and with the M42 style blades. These blades are much more accurate in their use and you need a machine that can actually mirror that as well. So accuracy and capability is the real key to this machine. Thank you very much for looking at this video. Um, I really hope you enjoy one of these machines if you do decide to purchase one. Thank you very much.